Well, look, I've changed my shirt for you. Yeah, I, I've well, from last week. I, I'm glad to see that you changed. I'm committed. <laughs> yeah, yes, that you changed shirts. Yes, I, I, I was looking. I at know the, you usually have a black shirt on. Yeah, uh, but the shirt black um, blends into the background for anyone watching on YouTube. But some people are listening to this. Yeah. Uh, on I, on. If you're watching this on YouTube and I'm wearing black, I look like a, a, a floating, floating head. head. Yes, you do. Which I've been called before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> floating head. Bloody floating head. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's been an amazing week again. Another and, amazing uh, week in, yeah. in, uh, in this corona world. Yeah, the corona world. Should have a, a like a, a, an amusement park. Corona mm. world. Yeah. Look, it's Mr. Sneezy. Yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah, every, let's go on the snot ride. Everyone lining up to go in, there has to be a metre and a half apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you, if you're, you're, <laughs> you, you've got to be either a metre or a half apart to get on this ride. That's right. It's, uh, you know, the metre and a half, some scientists decided that that's, they measured yeah, it. Yeah, the virus and, goes yeah. like a metre, 1.4 metres and goes, ah, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, that's it, <laughs> I've had enough, <laughs> I can't go any further. Is that, but some guys come out and said, no, two metres is probably better than one and a half metres. Uh, there's going to be someone else that comes out and goes, look, three metres is probably yeah, better. five kilometres. Five kilometres is probably five, better. See, the RSL yeah. had something, is it five kilometre radius? Radius, that's true. That was that's it. Good. It was like they were ahead of their time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so some RSLs, people are going back to them, they're going back to yes. the... Uh, Back to, uh, I don't know about cinemas. I don't know when that'll no, open No, no, but again. RSL clubs, God. It's, yeah. not, it's like, you know, it's like a one virus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I won't say anything more about that because it's good. They, yeah. we, they, RSL clubs have been great to us. Yes, they have years. been. We've done many a gig in an RSL yeah, that's club. That's right. Let yeah. me just change that a little bit there, like that. There you go. How's there, that? There we go. I, I just want to adjust that a tad. There yes. we go. Just so, that, just so that we can get it your full, nice. full yeah. vocal. No, that was uh, good. You know, full vocal range. That's right, because I might say something of importance. Yes, it hasn't happened <laughs> yet, but point, we never know. Mm -hmm. We're waiting. What about TV? Have you been watching much TV during this? Uh, no, not really. I, I, there's not. Uh, I've been watching what's going on. You know, oh, in terms of news, TV, news and stuff. Yeah. But that's all. I, I watch. Uh, YouTube's great because mm -hmm. you can, YouTube, you can specifically. You know, be interested in something. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm you'll interested. find that on there. Yeah, uh, you know, North African, well, Eastern Zimbabwean embroidery. What, you've been watching that? You, no, I'm oh. just saying, if you happen to oh, be interested right. in that, okay, okay. you'll find something. Yes. You know, I yeah. like. I want. I want to uh, look at people uh, chewing their own foot mm -hmm. for real. Yeah. You'll find some. I bet you. Cannibalism, if mm -hmm. you, that's a nasty word. But, you well, know, for someone they, chewing their own foot. That no, would they be don't like it, though. They don't like to. Oh, really? They don't, they don't like being identified no, as. No. Oh, what, what are they identified as now? Uh, just uh, meat eaters. Meat eaters. Ca yeah. Carnivores. Carnivores. <laughs> yeah, eating their own body. <laughs> what, what nonsense. But do you ever find that, though, the, the, uh, for me, sometimes I, I get immersed I, I, of an interest in things that I would normally not. Be interested, like you know, when I was looking for an engagement ring yes. for my fiance yes. Erica, yeah. I was trying to figure out which um, cash what, converters, <laughs> which cash <laughs> converters to go to. <laughs> now, um, what sort of um, diamond to get for it? Yeah, and I just immersed myself into the world of, of diamonds, diamonds and yeah, uh, yeah. the you know figuring out you know all the different um, cuts of like the four C's, yeah, cut yeah. clarity. Um, and so on. Oh, and yeah. then There's another scene. <laughs> no, the, the, the <laughs> that you call the salesman. <laughs> you <laughs> you want to bill. charge what? Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a four, fifth C. Yes. No, and, um, and cut, uh, cut clarity, color, and um, cut clarity, color. What's the third C? There's a third C. Oh, don't tempt me. Cut. You're tempting me now. <laughs> I, you know, it's a, you, you, this is dangerous territory. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 my, my wife is very intrigued by diamonds. Yeah, well. and, and I'd never, never interested me. But then when I started getting into this, I'm like mm. researching all these and all the different graders and and, yeah. and not only about the cut, you can have like the perfect cut, but then there's an, an another cut where it's mm. like hearts and arrows that yeah. within the within the um maybe that C is cut. Didn't I say I said cut oh. clarity, color and I wasn't listening. I, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm gonna what be a silly cut! I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to be killing myself over. Don't I'll, kill I'll get, yourself. I'll, I'll get back to you on the fourth. Yeah, seat. yeah. I can't yeah, wait. Yes. I'll be waiting with bated breath. 
and, and and so when you're talking about stuff on on YouTube that people mm. immerse themselves, well, for me, it's I I find myself getting immersed in a lot of things that normally I wouldn't have thought I would be interested in, and then no. you find people that are like experts in their field in this. That's right. So we went to this diamond grader in, in Las Vegas. Oh, we're back on the diamonds, yeah. yeah. Maybe by the end of this podcast, you can remember the fourth C. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and get, hang on, cut, clarity, oh, yeah. color, and, uh -oh. and, um, cut, cut, clarity, color, clarity. and, color, coordination, uh, collaboration, uh, culmination, uh, uh God damn. Uh, this is corrosion. Like, no, cut clarity, uh, color, and combustion. Christina <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Anu. <laughs> She's our diamond. Uh, well, it uh, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll move on. Move I'll, on. I'll get back to it next time. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll ring up uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. He was in that film Blood oh, Diamond. Blood Diamond. He, he, would know, he would know all about it. He does his research. Yep. Yeah. Where did um, I park my car? The pock, where did you park your car? Yeah, did I've, you park I've, it on I've a graph? Got, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So so anyway, we, we we went to this diamond grader in um in um in Las Vegas. Oh yeah. You're yeah. Already, you're already thinking of some other story. No 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 no. I, go, no. I see the look in your eyes. No, no, Whenever no. I'm saying something, look, and then you go like this, you go. You, this is the look you go, and that means all right that you you've checked out. No, I'm mentally checked out. Yeah, you, you know me you, too well. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I checked out like <laughs> years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, but a diamond dealer in yeah, Vegas. A grader. That, yeah, greater. Yeah. That we, doesn't we, sound sus at all. No, but it was in his house. In his we, house, we, we, and, we, we, oh, thought, yeah. we thought it was. But his house was all decked out. He, he's got all oh, these yeah. different machines. Yeah, because he scammed people it. like you. <laughs> but the thing is, like, it's under lock and key. Like, you go into a holding gate to then go oh, into yeah, the house, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and and. Yeah, we were talking to him about it, like going, hang on, has anyone ever tried to like stick you up or is this, you know, this seems like a, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems like a very vulnerable position to be in where someone's, yeah, in, yeah. and he goes, no one can get out of the house. And he, and then he starts talking about how he's a martial artist. And then Erica went back there because I had to come back to Australia. She went back there by himself yeah. and he pulled out the big blades uh -oh. and, he, and he's got these massive like, um, like for, but for like martial arts like samurai swords. swords yeah but they're for martial arts like for oh, um, yeah, yeah. um whatever kung fu that yeah. he, you do um, realize in america they got semi-automatic weapons <laughs> <laughs> that would destroy anyone yeah. with knives but if you're that close and this guy's got the knife all ready to go you can be really quick with that oh, as yeah. opposed to pulling a gun yeah, out yeah. so in those close quarters with a yeah, knife yeah. if you if you if you know how to use a knife it could be as devastating as a gun oh, in close yeah. quarters. Or it could be productive. You could shave someone yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't all have to be violence. Yeah. You always resort but, to violence. But this guy, this guy though, <laughs> had, was just immersed in this world. Like you could see he was so passionate. And I knew that we could trust this diamond grader because mm. I were, for him, it, yes. would, it, it would be like, like cutting off his own arm if he was to do you know sell a bad diamond or do the wrong thing like he was that entrenched in mm. in, in the world of of diamonds and, yeah. and, and putting his own honor in wow in, he's yeah got samurai swords yes if he, if he dis he would probably stab himself if he <laughs> yeah. did the wrong so thing harry carry yeah. i have disobeyed <laughs> <laughs> dishonored you <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a great f color not yes. g do you know do you know uh this, this is true right this and this is could only happen through stand-up because we get to travel extensively to places that you normally would never think of going. Yeah. There's a place in Boulder near um, uh, Kalgoorlie, yeah. south, uh, southwest Australia, mm -hmm. and it's a surreal place. It's in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert, like absolute desolation, and there's a little tiny town called Boulder. Mm -hmm. And if you go there, the, well, the last time I was there, there's a shop that, uh, that sells nothing but samurai swords and bongs and I swear to you this is true and the guy just is a really eccentric guy he just sits there reads his newspaper and gets annoyed when people walk in he's got one side samurai swords the other side bongs he must have thought you know people like you know to get stoned and then cut up shit <laughs> the perfect yeah, well, the yeah, perfect what, marriage what else are you going to do there exactly in Boulder going to cut shit up and, get, yeah. and have a bong yeah not in that order no <laughs> Well, it's good. He, well, you got that for cutting the hose. Oh yeah, cutting yeah. Cutting a hole in the bottle. Ceremoniously so, cutting yeah, the hose. Yeah, yeah. I make bong like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. That's how the the traditional masters did it. Uh, did yeah. he make the swords himself? Or no, no, no. They were traditional sold, swords. So he just sold them. Yeah, yeah. No. But he got annoyed if you asked him like, "How much are these swords?" And he'd yeah. go, like, "Have you got the money?" He go, "Well, are you gonna buy it or are you just asking?" 
Well, I'm just, uh, don't look, don't waste my time. And he gets <laughs> back to reading the paper. Uh, He'd be great, a great character. But uh, I don't know what we're going it's to. It's funny, though, when, when, you, when you see those places with those real characters. You don't see those characters too often anymore, in the, mm. uh, unless you're out in the sticks like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've got to live like there. If you're going to live in a place as desolate as that, you're going to be a bit weird. Yeah. You've got to yeah. be a bit strange, yeah. a bit eccentric, a yeah. bit but nuts. Remember the Olympic Cafe? Remember the Stanmore Cinema? Yeah. And on Parramatta Road yes. here in Sydney. Mm-hmm. And next door to that was the yes. Olympic Cafe with the old gentleman that used to... This, this was like a, a time capsule. This guy is in a time capsule that hasn't moved on since the 70s. And even like... The, like it's it's a, it's a milk bar, yeah. The old fashioned milk bar, old fashioned milk and bar, and even the milkshakes were in like uh, aluminium. Yes, uh, yes. And 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 they had like old. And, and, and you'd get the milk pour. He 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 had one of those. Yeah. It was like a big ladle, and he would open up the 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 metal like the um, yeah, yeah like the old days. And yeah. go down and and pull it out, and then pour it in there, and. That, I remember going there when I was a kid, before going to the movies, yeah. go in there, because the, the the chocolates were so expensive at the movies. Oh, yeah. No, so yeah. You, would, you would go in there beforehand, yeah. you'd stock up, put it into your jacket pocket and in your pants and walk in like you don't, you know, you're just walking yeah. in, you're not bringing food <laughs> in. They didn't like that, bringing is that food. A, is that a gay time in your <laughs> pants? <laughs> yes, I'm just happy. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and so that place would go there all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there maybe, the last time I went there was maybe like four years ago. Yeah. Still open. Mm. And he was still there. You know, and I'll, I'll, look, going to that shop, and I've been to it myself, it's like, it, it is, it is it, like. It's a time warp. It's like a time warp. It's not, it's it, almost it like it's not even there. No. It's like you're going to he's, he's got all the packets up around the. Or like that the haven't old, changed since no, the 70s. Yeah, the old signs and the actual mm. original packets for like a yeah, box yeah. of like flake. Or a box of like Flag, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, it, and it's all sun faded. And he's got the old signs. And now what's he, what's the now his wife used to sell samurai swords <laughs> and bongs. <laughs> yeah. She used to be that she passed away. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's what they used to do together all the time. So he yeah. would keep the he would always, you know, be there every day yeah. until late at night. I would drive down Parramatta Road some nights and look in the front door was open and that one lone light was on hanging there mm-hmm. and you could see him just it's standing a, waiting. It's, yeah. Lonely now, people. Now the health board, oh, it's, called, it's called the Olympic Cafe. Yes. Oh, the Olympic, yeah, the, old, the Olympic Milk Bar. On Parramatta uh, Road. On Parramatta Road. Yep, near, near, the, near the corner of Parramatta Pride. Road and Johnson Street. Yes, it's, it's and, my uncle. And, and <laughs> No, no. And we, uh, we would drive past, have a look, there he is. Yeah, yeah. The council came and shut it down, or the health board shut it down. Mm-hmm. I was so so sad. I thought, oh, it's been closed for so long. I thought the guy is probably passed away it's now. Probably for the best. Now, mm. Erica and I went to get some food across the road. Oh yeah. I look over, the lights on in there. We oh. walk over there. I'm looking in there, the lights on. No one's home. And so I just get the camera out just to record a bit. Yeah. I've got the footage. In fact, I'll put it on the, on the YouTube yeah, of this put it, podcast. Put it on, I'm going to yeah. put it on. As proof. He walks, there's, there's this dark doorway. Yeah. Suddenly this figure appears in the doorway and walks out. Mm. He's there. It's wow. him. Wow. And, and he looks and then goes back in. And maybe it's Jesus come back as a, as, a, as a milk bar attendant. Yeah, maybe. From the I, 70s. But, he, but when we were younger, insensitively, we referred to him as Dracula. Cause oh, he, yeah, yeah. He looked like, you know, Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah. And, and I remember I would, uh, I, and when I went back years later, I was talking to him and I said, oh, I used to come here as a child and I, I used to buy, and he goes, everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then he, and, then he, and then he ate your neck. <laughs> he bit you. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but then, this, but this was so sad though. After when I saw him that night come out and go back in, he got a cup of tea and he just walks over and he just sits down and he waits behind the counter like he used to wait for someone well, to come in and the store's closed. Mm. And I thought his wife has passed. I, I don't know if he has children or not, mm. but he just sits there and still goes through the routine that he would as if the mm. store were open. It's and a very uplifting story. Yeah. It's good. I feel... Uh, <laughs> you, feel <laughs> well, there's a, you, know, you know the guy that sells the wristbands in yeah, the city? Yeah, yeah. Now, back if you're from the, Sydney... Back in the 90s? No, no, he's still there. I know he's still there, but back in the 90s... No, no, not 90s. No, like but... early 80s. Oh, early when 80s. When I was at school. Oh, right, because I remember him as a kid going into the city. Yeah, 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 as a kid, right? So this guy's been there for 40 years. Literally, or even longer, mm-hmm. he's an Indian guy. He looks weird. He's got and it, and this trench coat. Ha- yeah, it would always be like a ca- um, uh, like a um, a khaki trench coat on. Yeah, he's got a trench coat on, and uh, and when he flashes it, 
eat, eat, eat nothing disgusting. He's got all these, yeah, these uh, wristbands. Wristbands that he's yeah, made. He's now, braided. I swear to you, I have not seen ever anyone buy it no. or even approach him. No. He just comes in and points it at uh, <laughs> like this. And Kate, my wife, felt sorry for him. Oh. So I told her, I said, this guy's been around yes. since... Since he used to be. He used to be out inside the George Street cinemas. Yeah, he still hangs out the there. And then the old Regent um, Theatre that used to be there yeah. next to KFC on the corner of yeah, Market yeah. and George. Yeah, he's a, he's a dark guy with a gigantic nose. Yes, looks like Dracula. Yes, maybe you know. It's more of a Middle Eastern Dracula. A Middle Eastern Dracula. Yeah. Mediterranean Dracula. Mediterranean Dracula. And uh, and my wife went up and said she felt sorry for him. She said, I said he's been doing this. I've never seen anyone buy one mm. of those wrists off. And she and she so she went and said, oh, "Hi, how much are these wristbands?" Because hundred and eight dollars. <laughs> she went, "What? And that's too much." I was uh, thinking, I, "Can I give you ten dollars?" Was it a hundred or eight dollars? Hundred and eight. Hundred and eight. Then she made sure she goes, hundred and eight. That's very specific." And she said, "I'll give you ten dollars." And he goes, "No." And he walked really? off. He yelled at her. He goes, "No!" And then walked Bloody off. Bloody hundred. No wonder he's not selling any. That's right. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to sell them. Maybe yeah. that's the whole scheme. Is just a. Wow. But you know, he's remember, been. Anthony Murr had a joke about him. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, what did he say? Because you he's know that guy that you know. That sells a wristband. Yeah. That's that's his mother. <laughs> and I've seen his mother, and they're identical. Wow. You, you okay. could not tell them apart. Yeah. And she comes up to me with a wristband. <laughs> no, no, it's not Anthony's mother. He, he uh, I reminded him of the joke, but he had an extra tag that he put on that joke, which yeah. he totally he didn't remember doing. Yeah. But he said, "Um, you guys, I saw that guy in a back alley in Glebe, and he had um he had the the guy playing the you know the yeah, played yeah. the drums. There used to be a guy who played no, it was like plastic containers yeah. and and like aluminium containers. Yeah. But he was he actually got very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he said he he said um that was like the the guy who sells the wristbands, the guy on the drums was like his support act. Yeah, yeah. I saw him in a back alley in Glebe. I think they're on tour. They're on tour. Yeah, he used to do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He did. Yeah. But uh, it's good. Making fun of the misfortune is always a good uh, <laughs> source of comedy. No, it's uh, it's it's um there was uh, there was another guy. Who lived in uh, Burwood? Used to go via Burwood when I went to school a mm-hmm. long time ago, and he would just laugh. He would mm. just laugh and laugh and laugh. And mm. then if he saw a woman with big boobs, he'd go right up to her and point and laugh. And, go, yeah. <laughs> and, go, <laughs> and then and then I saw him do this one. At least he's laughing. Usually, oh, non stop. People, people are swearing or but at least he's happy. No, know, he's happy. Yeah, his imaginary friends are good. Yeah, yeah. They're not nasty. Yeah. But uh, there was this bakery. And it was middle of summer, and I'll never—you know—when you just remember things, little moments mm. from your life, and you go, "I'll never forget that long mm. as long as I live." I don't know why my brain retained it, but it made me laugh a lot. I knew the guy; I didn't never really talk to him, but I, I used to observe him. He, he's like, you know, interesting character. He used to walk around laughing, pointing at people. But there's this bakery where these young girls would work, and it's like literally 35 degrees, mm. and they're sweating, and it's just dirty and really hard work mm. and um and he, he's looking at at the bakery through the window and then he knocks on the window really hard the, everyone looks up and he gives him the finger <laughs> and then and then laughs mm. <laughs> and walks off uh, that that you know that remained <laughs> with me that's one of them that's great you don't <laughs> see a lot of people like that you know as much as you used to see them i remember as a kid seeing Characters like that all the time, especially yeah. around Balmain where I yeah, grew up. Yeah, yeah. But now it's it's rare. That, and yeah, I, yeah. I I love those people that upset you know the 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 mundane yeah. day to day. Me too. Like whenever they got onto a bus and people couldn't escape them, that yeah. was always the best. This is a, another story. There, there was used to be a guy who used to um, have a trolley, not a trolley, it was like a wheelbarrow. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the wheelbarrow? Mm-hmm. You remember him? Oh no, no, uh, no! Oh. I remember the uh, wheelbarrow, but what, what, I remember a wheelbarrow. <laughs> this is specific. It's not a general uh, story said, about you wheelbarrows. Said, you just said yeah, the guy had a trolley. No, he he had he had a wheelbarrow. You remember? I'm like, yeah, I remember the wheelbarrows. <laughs> the wheelbarrows. <laughs> 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 no, this guy had a specific wheelbarrow. Yeah, and uh, it was like made of wood. Right, and uh, and he had a helmet on. Right, and he used to push. Had all his belongings there, and he'd push it. And and he'd look up and he'd had like a hunch, mm. like he hunched over. Mm. And uh, we, I did art at school because it was a bludge, mm. three unit art. Yep. Because he did nothing, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to do anything, and this suited me fine. And one day, uh, one of the assignments was go to the city and take photos, right? And I was with my friend, um, 
Cameron Henderson. Mm. And Cameron is this really, he's kind of like you, you know, very, very empathetic and, you know, uh, wants to see the good in everybody. And this is uh, uh, on Elizabeth Street where Hyde Park is. Yep. And we're across the road. And he goes, man, I see that guy a lot. He's pushing you. I mean, you, know, you wonder what his story is, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, if we, I, I, I want to take a photo of him, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and ask him first. <laughs> I said, okay. So I stayed on the one side of the road. He, have I told you this no, story? No, no, I'm just laughing yeah. already. Like you're, you're sort of holding back. Okay, Trevor, go and ask him. <laughs> I mean, uh, Cameron Henderson yeah. crosses the road. He goes, oh, I'm sure all he needed was someone to talk to. Yeah. He walked, and all I see from across the road is him walking up, bending over, talking to the guy, and the guy just turns around and swings at him and punches <laughs> him right in the jaw, oh, no. like almost knocks him down. Oh. Then bang, and then like a real hard punch, Shit. and then kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> My friend came back with the camera. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Fractured jaw. Would have been great if you had a camera and got that shot. I didn't think. Oh, I was, I was, that would have been perfect. Oh, now you yeah. tell me. Yeah, you no, probably would have got the art prize for school. But I was, I, it just took me by surprise. Wow. Uh, he just bang, clocked yeah. him in the head. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he stopped being empathetic after that. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's um, but just seeing people like, like I said, on the buses. I remember a guy on the bus and he had one of the old fashioned head things, yeah. he- head headphones. You know, the big ones? Yeah, the big yeah. One, and had, Before people and, wear and it had, Yeah, and it had the big sort of wire bit over the top with a bit of like vinyl plastic yeah, over it. Yeah, yeah. And he had the coiled cord. Coming out, and he's like dancing and and, yeah. and, and just loving the music. Mm. But as I look closer, flailing around was just the 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 cord, the coiled cord. It's oh, not right. even plugged into not anything. Even plugged in. And yeah. he was on the bus, just having the best time listening to. It's fantastic. Yeah. He's, it's Bluetooth before Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. Bluetooth in his head. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. But you know, look, remember I told you before that. And as you well know, actually, I don't have to tell you, but uh, amazing coincidences happen Mm. to me Mm -hmm. and always has like in my entire life. Like you think, what are the chances of that happening? Mm -hmm. I was once performing at a place called uh, Glen Innes Mm -hmm. and I was, I was, it was me and my mate Jay Sullivan and Jay was the support act, did Mm -hmm. his bit, I went on and it was a full house, like about like 250 people. It wasn't huge, but it was full and it was nice lovely audience and um just oh man i can't believe and uh and these two girls were in the front row texting each other mm. all right and, I and said, that's annoying because as a as a comedian or anyone performing on stage you can see that in the audience so it's distracting just for anyone in the and audience it's rude it's like i'm performing for you especially in the front row too yeah. but, but like i've had that before when you look out across the sea of people and you see people on the phone they, they think that they're getting away with it but they're just lit up with it but no one else can see so yes. so it's annoying you but not anyone else yes Continue. and i've asked them many times like yes three times please girls just put the phones away or yes. go to the back so i don't get distracted it's a bit rude for you to sit there while i'm performing mm-hmm. and you're uh, dismissing me like fair that. enough fair enough right fair enough Anyway, they kept doing it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, in desperation, I went That's down, got yes. the phone. Yes. And I said, and I've done this before with you, and it's always worked. You know, when I call someone from mm-hmm. their, from their uh, contacts, mm-hmm. I'm strolling through her contacts. She's got hundreds. Mm-hmm. I said, let's call someone. And it's like mom and brother or whatever. And oh, and then I see Kiwi. Mm. And I said, Kiwi? She goes, yeah, call Kiwi. Mm-hmm. Should I call Kiwi? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, all right, I'll call Kiwi. Kiwi, they're, they're nice and fluffy, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Kiwi, it's, uh, like, you know, and, it, and it stood yeah. out because it wasn't a name, yeah, you know? Sure. It was like just Kiwi. Sure. And I thought, I'll ring Kiwi, and I ring Kiwi and uh, mm-hmm. on stage and put it on speakerphone, and uh, and Kiwi answers. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, g'day, Kiwi. And he goes, straight away, he goes, is that you, Akmal? So I thought, okay, he knows me. Cause the, uh, How you know, the hell did he know? Oh, he knew your voice. No, no, he, he knew that it's a small town. Oh. So I was the, I was the performer on. Right. And there was a show on. Yeah. His friends are there. Okay. So he knew that they were going to see you. He must have yeah, recognized okay. my voice. Right. So, yeah, well, so I thought, okay, he knows me. We can play around. Yeah, yeah, sure. I said, where are you, you, you dickhead? Where are you? And he goes, what? He goes, come on. <laughs> Kiwi, what's your real name? Yeah, big galoot. Something, I, you know, I was, was, I was a Yeah, you're on stage. You, yeah. You're, you're in the moment. You went to town on this guy. I Kiwi. went to town on this okay. guy. I can't remember exactly what I said, okay. but then he pauses, and I'm waiting for a laugh. You know, yeah. <laughs> we're having a good time. <laughs> and, uh, and everyone, I, I should have known, because the people in the audience are putting their heads in their hands and shaking, and they're going, they, they, they're giving me the signal not to call Kiwi. Ah. All right? And I'm going, he goes, uh, mate, if I come, if I come over he, there, I'm going to break your legs. And I was think, he kidding? 
Well, I thought he was at the time, oh, but he wasn't. He yeah, he goes, he goes, I'm going to break your legs. And I said, well, where are you? You chicken, you're chicken. You're scared. I reckon I could take you. You sound wimpy. You know, you have a small dick. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. All that stuff, yeah. right? Anyway, we, we sh I close it, and I didn't realize that Kiwi is the most violent person in the town. Mm. He was banned from playing footy for punching out the referee and knocking him out cold. <laughs> the ref? Yeah. Not even the opponent. No, no, he punched out the ref. Wow. And, and, and he's been banned for life. He's been in and out of jail and he's a big lad, mm. like gigantic, apparently like, you know, like... You know, he's uh, a Kiwi. He's a big, like... Yeah, but bigger than... Th this, this is how terrifying he was. When he showed up, the he came. He came to the gig. He came to the gig. I'm on stage. I, I'm oblivious to this. So what, he came into the room. No, he came into the venue. It, it was like a, a like a club. Right. So he came into the club, and this is how terrifying he was. Uh, that that the bouncers got scared and hid. <laughs> the when he turned up. Yeah. Yeah. These country towns, you know, they're not. Yeah. And this guy is <clears throat> like dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And um. And apparently he's, uh, he suffers from schizophrenia and all. Just my luck <laughs> of all the people, right? <laughs> anyway, I finish the show. Show goes okay. Yeah. I go backstage. So this, where's Kiwi at this point? He, he didn't make it in. So did you know he that he was here? He made it in. And so the, the manager called the police. Because, right. because so he had he made it into the no, into not the into the theatre. Okay. No, no, right. I, I'm oblivious to it till okay. I got backstage. Okay. okay, you get off stage. I get off stage. Yeah. And there's three policemen. Waiting backstage. Yeah. You know, to, because we <coughs> we reported, <laughs> and and they're kind of giggling, and uh, and he goes, yeah, mate, yeah, g'day, Akmal, yeah, you you called Kiwi, did you? I said, oh, I thought we were just joking, and he, the guy, the big sergeant, laughs. He goes, mate, of all the people oh, no. you had to call, he's the most violent guy in the town. He's the scariest. Guy. And I said, what was he likely to like be violent? He goes, yeah. <laughs> Of course he is. That's what he does. <laughs> we're going, oh, shit, is he likely to kind of... And it was two motels in the place. And, um, and we were staying in one of them, obviously. And, uh, and so he could easily find me. And, um, and I got scared. And we, went, we drove to the next... We, we drove to Armadale. Which oh, was so like, you just left the... Yeah, we had accommodation. I was so scared <laughs> wow. that we drove for three hours to Armadale, found the hotel. Wow. And that hotel was already paid for. So we had to pay for another accommodation because <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to get any sleep with Kiwi, you know. So you, you figured Kiwi would track you down. Yeah, yeah, he would have. He was yeah. looking for me. The reason he left the club was because the, the cops showed up. Did they give you an escort? No. The cops? They were laughing. They were laughing their heads off. He goes, mate, you're so unlucky. <laughs> oh, mate, oh, yeah. mate you, you, of all the people, you could have called. Uh, but, of co but of course, that's, that's going to happen to you. But like, that's the you thing, know, man. I'm cursed. You, well, yeah. I, I don't know, but it, but it makes for good good stories, good yes, material. I but guess. Because, but, uh, but you always, no matter if it's live shows, yeah. on TV, there's always something that's going to happen with you. Always something, man. The, the, I, you told me. Refresh my memory. You were on a TV show, right? Yes. It was, um, is it Kylie Kwong? Kylie Kwong, the cook. Ka Kylie the Kwong, the cook. They don't like yeah. cook. They have to say oh, chef. They, oh, they like chef. Yeah, okay, yeah. You're okay. the cook. Or you're the... Uh, oh, I guess, yeah. All right. Kitchen yeah, hand. She's a have, kitchen you, hand. You have line chefs and then you have cooks. Uh, she's, she's, she's quite well known. She's the uh, uh, Chinese girl. She's yeah. really... Um, ABC. Uh, she, she has cookbooks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, she's, ABC that she's yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. She's got a famous yeah. restaurant okay. in, in the cross. Okay. And she was doing a show. Yeah. And the idea of the show was uh, you cook something with Kylie mm -hmm. and then you invite your family mm -hmm. over, right? Yeah. And I did it because I just, I said something, I said no to something beforehand that, that I thought well, I wasn't right for. And, mm. and my manager, Artie, rang up and said, mate, you got to do this. Well, what are you doing? Turning down TV. Mm. You, you're not that big. You're not, you know, you, you got to accept. And I thought, okay, I'm under <laughs> pressure now. <laughs> That's what you want to hear from you, man. Listen, you're yeah, not yeah. that big. Oh, you man. Do he, he tells me, he, I asked him about the coronavirus and he yeah. goes, oh, look, I think for people like you who don't pull big crowds, <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, well, what's the limit? Twenty people of any? You'll be oh, fine. you'll be bang, fine. Bang. You'll get full houses here. Well, you've been selling out of late earlier this. Year. That's the, that's the irony of this situation. Well, you know, well, uh, the, the, the the sad coincidence that you were selling out like for the first run of this year. Your numbers yeah. have been great, and I'm, then the corona hit. And the corona hit. Yeah. I had the good show too yeah, this year. Yes, 
but it doesn't matter. Let's not put lament. It on ice. Let's put it on ice. Mm. Let's take some ice mm. and then we'll forget about it. No, no, <laughs> don't, don't take ice, kids. Um, you know, yeah. I'm getting distracted now. Yeah, so yeah. basically uh, the idea was, so I was under pressure to do the show. Yes. And, and, and so the only problem was I was living in Canberra and at my father-in-law's house and, mm -hmm. you know, he wasn't going to have anyone over and I didn't have a house basically. Yeah. So I thought, that's okay. I'll, I'll ring my family. I've got big, a big family. Sure, sure. And one of them is going to accept me into their home and we can film there. And, you know, not one of them accepted that invitation. Not no one way. of them. Not one of them. And they got like... And but did you text them or did you call them? No, or? I called them. I said, well, we well, want to do this. They said, no, I don't want to do the... I don't want, no, I don't want to be on TV. I said, oh, you don't have to be on TV. You can just... Basically, it's at the end. We're just having a meal that I cooked yeah. for you and it's going to be filmed. No, definitely not. Definitely not. I talked to my auntie uh, Alice, who's a fantastic cook, yeah. so she would have been a good judge of yeah. the food. And and she was really nice to me at first when I said, "Hi, auntie, how are you?" No, long time no see. I love you very much. I miss you. And, yeah. and, I said, and then I said, "Would you do? The, can I come to your house to film this show, mm -hmm. a, a cooking show?" And she paused. She said, "On TV." And I said, "Yes." And she goes, "Listen." My sister Sophie is dying in hospital and I don't need this shit. <laughs> but in Arabic. She goes, and I'm not so, you know. She goes, this is how it sounded in Arabic. And uh Sophie bit mutful mustache from Mushnatsa. Now Kylie Kwong yeah. T V show, this has been on on the show you have to have a uh, family member, right? Yeah. But so, yeah. so all your family has said no. Said no, including my auntie Alice. I was I was leaving her as my ace up my sleeve because she was she's amazing at yeah. cooking and stuff. Yeah. She said no. Um, so I thought, well, should I cancel it? But mm. Artie's going to get upset if I cancel sure, it. Sure, sure. Anyway, and you have you you've already said yes to these people. I've already they've said yes, and they've already paid me. Oh shit! So I don't want to give the money back. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, pages, yeah. Yes. Oh, no, I don't want to give the money back. I've already spent it. All right. And so, anyway, I was, I remembered a, fr a, a, a friend, of, well, a guy I hardly know really, but he's a lovely man um, he, who owns uh, the Cairo Cafe, which is an Egyptian restaurant mm -hmm. in, in Enmore, in Sydney. Right. So I went up to him and said, you know, um, I'm filming this thing. I don't know. I don't, my family all said no. He goes, well, you can, and I, I'd given up by that stage. And he said, I, why don't you shoot it at my house? My house. I said, but you're not family. Mm. He said, that doesn't matter. We're both Egyptian, right? Except he's a Muslim and his mum was uh, <laughs> covered in the, uh, the, the hijab <laughs> and pictures of his family are all at <laughs> his mum's house. It was his so, mum's house. So let actually. me get this right. You're, you're planning to basically play this family off as your relatives. As my relatives. It was his mother's house. It was his For mother's house in the and suburbs. You, you, and you'd never been I'd to I'd never house? met his mother, never <laughs> been to his house. I can hardly remember his name. He sham, I think it was. Right. And um, he shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> shame on me. <laughs> anyway, so he, you know, gener generously he of offered his mum's right. house. Yes. Now, is he, uh, is his mother, is, is the family in on this? Do they know that they got to pretend to be your relatives? Well, I didn't have a, she didn't speak any English at all. Oh, okay. She was a bit right, just so quiet. She just sat there watching TV the whole time. So this guy's the only one that knows. I don't even setup. think, yeah, it's not his house, his mum's house. Right. And, and I don't think he even told his mum. So all these film crews were coming in <laughs> and she's just watching TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> the film like, why, why aren't there any photos of Akmal? In yeah, there? there's no, well, you know, the, but, you know, I was born before film was invented and, you know, I, I they didn't ask. Yeah. They didn't ask. They knew something sus was going on. Well, when they mm. saw it, because did they know that you were Coptic? Well, I... Coptic d Orthodox uh, and not Muslim? No, I'm not sure if they knew, but, okay. you know, like, uh, I, I, I guess they must have. Yeah, but there would be something, because doesn't this show get into your history and your yeah, background? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So they would know that you... They knew. Look, yeah. they knew from the time they went <laughs> home that this was not my mother. Yeah. Right? right. So it was a big charade. So and, you're uh, like, oh, hi, mum, and... Like, were yeah, you yeah, pretending well, well, or were you just very distant? No, no, I was, I didn't talk to her at all. I was really <laughs> embarrassed that I kept saying, sorry, sorry, because people were just coming in and out. They're mm. just basically, it's a crew of about seven mm. in this woman's house that I'd never met before, mm -hmm. pretending that she's my mother. Right. Right. Anyway, it was really funny because uh, they knew that I, they must have known I'm a Christian because every time she appeared in shot, they'd ask her to move. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> like, yeah, they'd be oh, talking. Right. So you reckon they, they were onto it then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, but... In this, they said, you have to have someone from your family. I, mm. I called my uh, um, auntie Mona. Mm. 
Mm. Auntie Mona, uh, she's the only one that said yes. Is this Auntie Mona in Melbourne? Yeah. Yes. She lives in Melbourne. I've so been they, there. That's right. You've I been to her cook. house. She's a very good cook. She's an excellent yes. cook. There you go. See, yes. nothing I say is bullshit. <laughs> and she and they flew her over, her and her daughter, and put her up. Oh, that's nice. I flew, flew them up from Melbourne. Yeah. But, so they so were, did they come to the house? Yeah, they came to the house pretending to be, because we had to fill it. You yeah. know, we did, can't but, did, be, but did they talk to this lady whose house yeah, yeah, it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. She knew she was Muslim right. and they talked to, you know, they got on really well. Okay, so it could seem like that they were maybe family. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so the food comes out. We're all, uh, I got my friend Sam as well, pretending to be my cousin and all that. It was, the whole thing was a lie from mm-hmm. start to finish, right? And um, anyway, I had this basbusa cooked, which is like a sweet so I, I, the, the idea was, oh no, I forgot another bit. Oh, fuck, fuck, no. this is worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the beginning when, when we, uh, because you had to, <laughs> you had to pre-film stuff, right? <laughs> so before that, they, they said, okay, we want to basically uh, relive your childhood with your mother. Was your mother a good cook? I said, oh. yeah, my mother was a great cook. And oh. she goes, okay, is there a place that she took you to go shopping? Right. You know, is there a place to th- where she bought the food? Yeah. <coughs> and I Let's said, see. yeah, there is. And she said, um, and she goes, so w- did you buy the food with her? Is that how you learn to be a good cook? Mm. I don't, I'm not a good cook. I mm. don't cook. But I was lying to get sure, the gig. Sure, sure. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she goes, okay, can you give us the address of the shop? I said, okay. So anyway, I went to, you, <laughs> went to the online. <laughs> There's a place in Bankstown <laughs> that sells like these herbs and <laughs> spices and stuff. And I said, yeah, that, that's the shop. Anyway, we're at the shop one, uh, morning. This is before the dinner and everything. Okay. This is just the prelude. So this is a prelude to them knowing that this is going to get yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So and, and they go into the shop and they go, this is an amazing shop. Right, right. So you came here with your mum when you were a child. Mm. I said, yeah, mm. yeah. And so they, buy, they were buying it right mm-hmm. up until the end of the shoot where they talk to the owner of the shop and they say, wow, so you must have been here a very, very long time. Mm. He goes, no, t- six years. Because six <laughs> years, and everyone turns to me and looks at me. <laughs> like, and I said, oh, but yeah, the shop before that, it was also a similar shop. And he chimes in, he goes, no, it was a laundromat. <laughs> oh, my God. So they knew I was bullshitting from the start. I said, oh, maybe it was a different shop. I, <laughs> oh, I, I think I got confused. It was a different, oh, that's right. It was another shop in another <sighs> suburb that I can't remember that probably never existed. And what was, what was, the, what was Kylie Kwong there at the yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, Kylie what was, was there. What was her reaction? She's a very serious person, you know, mm. so uh, she just lo- <laughs> looked and she was having conversations with, uh, with, with the producer, and, yeah, they're like, what the, you know, mostly saying, can you, can you tell Akmal not to cut me off while I'm saying stuff? Oh, really? Yeah, I cut people off. And uh, so she, the producer comes and says, Kylie said, could you not cut her off? And so the, uh, as soon as I, that lie was revealed, she, was, she went off and had a conference with the whole team, <laughs> and I'm standing there with the <laughs> owner, <laughs> going, I don't know, so man. So this is a prelude to all of the other stuff that Yeah, happened. yeah, yeah. So, so it just snowballs So fast forward here. now oh, wow. to uh, uh, my uh, friend that I only met a couple of times who owns the Cairo Cafe's mum's house, <sighs> pretending that this is my family, because my family betrayed me. Mm. And um, anyway, I, I, we cooked this basbusa that I said that I'm very uh, good at cooking. I thought, mm. I'll just learn, I'll just YouTube it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I learned it from YouTube sure. and did it. And, and I said to Auntie Mona, so you, you're going to have to be the judge because <coughs> you're the only expert here. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and, and so anyway, they're filming it. This is a big build-up to you know, my cooking abilities. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she goes, but I'm not going to lie. If I don't like it, I'm going to say it uh, you know, because I'm a Christian. I don't, you know. I said, of course, of course. Mm. But people had eaten it and they thought it was yeah, a fine. Yeah, you, you're you know? confident in this. I was dish. confident, uh, you know, yeah. it's not it's not that difficult. Right. Anyway, she eats it and she chews it for about thirty seconds, and then sh- suddenly she goes, "I don't know what this is, but it's not basbusa." And she chucks the piece in her hand into the like the plate, and it just the plate jumps up, <laughs> <laughs> it jumps off the plate. Everyone's <laughs> really silent, and I go, "Oh wow." Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, <laughs> and that, you know, surprise, not surprisingly, it never went to air. They never showed that show. No, they never yeah. showed I'd it. Love Thankfully. To, I'd love to see that show. I'm sure you could. Yeah. 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 I, that's, you know, that, 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 that for me, I would tune in to watch that. Whenever I, I lie or try to deceive someone, I'm always busted. Yes, you are. Always caught you, out. You are. No matter what. 
you know. But you still persist. I still persist. I'm like Trump. Yes. Exactly. I'm saying, no, I didn't lie. Yeah, but the thing is, you will admit to the lie when caught out, though. Yeah, that's the like, you, 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 you'll, you'll just do a complete 180 and totally... Oh, totally, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> you'll commit, 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 and then ask one question, you're like, yeah, nah, you're right. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, sorry, I did. I'm, I'm a terrible I, liar. I once had a situation with... Uh, um, not not as embarrassing as oh, oh no, no no it was pretty Hard embarrassing it was pretty embarrassing yes I get a call from my friend Clint Patterson I know Clint friend, Patterson Clint yes. Patterson yes. very funny comic father of three yes father if of only three. he'd used the condom yeah. <laughs> he'd be much happier <laughs> but Clint who's now diversified um, with his um, he's doing sp- uh, speeches at like conferences on, nutrition on nutrition yes he's done TED talks you know he's, yeah uh, yeah so this is he's a you, doer yeah he's a doer mm. he gets it done gets the job done. Mm-mm. He um he calls me up, right? And he goes, Mate, what are you doing on uh Friday week after next? And I'm like, I've got a gig, I'm working with Akmal in Canberra. And he goes, Can you get out of it? I said, Well, I don't really want to get out of it, you know. I, I thanks, wasn't thanks sure. for saying yeah. that. Yeah. And, mm. and he's <laughs> <laughs> and he says, Mate, I've just got a call from my mate James, he's a producer at Channel Ten. His first words were, were when I picked up the phone, this is the call you've been waiting for. Oh, right. Uh, right. Telstra. (laughs) (laughs) He said said that they're developing this new TV show concept. Yes. And they had a boardroom meeting about it. They want Clint as one of the panelists. Yeah. They're looking for a host of it. And he said that my name came up, that they wanted me to host this show. Yes, I remember that. And it's based on like, um, there's a show uh, in the States called like Talk Soup. And uh, um, yeah. so Bad Soup? and no, talk soup. Oh, it was like yeah. um, um, Greg Kinnear, the actor. He hosted it originally back yeah, yeah. in back in the late nineties, I believe. Yes, yes. And they were wanting to do a version of it on Channel Ten, mm-hmm. and they said you and you're the, the man. Yeah, mm. a- and I said, "What is this show?" Because you know I, I'm you're dubious. very suspicious. I'm yeah. dubious, yeah. you know. Mm. And he said, "Mate, this this is like a great opportunity." I said, "Well, I don't really want to get out of the gig with Akmal." And, I, and thanks it, for it, saying that again. Yeah, I, yeah, no. that, cut to the real thing. <laughs> oh, mate, I was I've looking, been looking for, for some a reason <laughs> to get out of this shit gig. <laughs> <laughs> and so he says, um, "He said, mate, you wanted to." Do this. And I, these were my words. I said, "I hope this isn't one of these." These shows where they commentate on fashion and Kardashian and all that, all oh, that yeah. shit. I, I just, I, I don't want to do. I don't want to do it. That. About, yeah, I'm against that. I'm against that. Right? And he said, "Mate, it's not about that. This show's going to be great. Mm. You know, got to come in and do it." So you did it. So I go in there, yeah. and I'm waiting for you. So Where's Joel? Yeah, yeah. Where's Joel gone? So jump cut. Selling his soul. That's <laughs> what he's doing. Yeah. It's it's a it's a Friday. Um, you know, the Friday after the next. Yeah, yeah. Clint's not there. He's meant to be there for this. Oh. He's running late because he was coming from a corporate gig. He was in working Cairns. with me <laughs> in Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> he's stiff <Steve> chap. <laughs> I'm there in the studio. Yeah. Clint walks in. I've got a. First of all, this is what I was kind of put up. Uh, I was kind of, oh, this is kind of sad. Mm. The guy holding the cue cards for me to read off of was Jonathan Coleman. Oh yeah, Jonathan. remember him? Oh, yeah, I know, the, I know Jonathan. In, in the eighties, he was like the number, like huge in radio. Radio guy, yeah. Yeah, and then he went to the UK. Simon Townsend's won the world. Yeah, and he mm. was huge in radio in the yes, UK. Yes, yes. Now he's holding cue cards. That's all right. I thought, and then, and then, and then during the break, he said, "Listen, I'm just running off to get some food. Do you want me to get you a pizza? Do you want? I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting everyone food here." And I just thought, "Oh wow, that really, it really hit me." That if you're listening to this, uh, Jonathan Coleman. Uh, there's nothing wrong with holding up cue cards. It's better than crime. <laughs> yes, it is. It is, yeah. it is. But no, I was really like, oh. Yeah, I tell uh, you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he's, um, do, he's doing like infomercials. At, right, right. Bun busters. I remember back... Have buns of steel. I remember when I was a kid. Rock back hard in, abs. <laughs> is he? Yeah. He's like Moira. Yeah, he's like, he's, he's like Moira. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 he was up at Dad's farm back in the 80s and there was a bathtub at the top of the farm and I remember he fell into the bathtub, was out, outside. All right. And he got stuck, couldn't get out. So wow. I had that memory as a as a as couldn't a get child. out. So he no, still he still no. Well, eventually, he eventually got out. Got yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Initially, he couldn't get out. <laughs> and so, but what's even worse, more embarrassing than Jonathan Coleman, yes, is me standing there as Clint walks in, in a wig, a judge's wig, with an um a hammer, judge's hammer, hitting it, going order, order, Kim Kardashian crimes against fashion. Uh oh. Oh. Just what you didn't want. It was exactly yeah. it was exactly what I thought this bullshit was. Yeah, what yeah, I asked yeah. Clint about when he said it wouldn't be that. 
the show, nothing ever happened with the show. Mm. It was, uh, I, so basically, I missed out on a gig that night, which would have been, probably been an enjoyable gig. Yeah. Uh, there's humiliating footage in the shame file somewhere out there of me, you know. Oh, no, do, there's do, no, no, no shame, this. no but, shame. But, but then That's afterwards, me. the guy called me up and he was like, the producer, like, so apologetic, mate, the show is, you know, it's just not going ahead. It's not. No but, kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but me, m my question though is, how's Jonathan Coleman doing? And he said, oh, mate. He just got let go this morning. I was oh, like, it just oh. got worse for Jonathan. I know. For me, I felt worse for him than I did for my. Don't feel bad for him. He made millions in the eighties. Yeah. He did lots of coke. He did, did he? Drank lots of Coca Cola. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, right, no, well, no. he was. He, he's he's doing so he's fine. fine. Yeah, Jonathan's yeah, he's fine. fine. Okay. This good, is back good. when radio hosts were getting like millions. Right. So he's yeah, all right then. He's fine. Okay. He's well, fine. then I should be more concerned about myself. Be more concerned about yourself. Yes. No, but, uh, pilots are, are weird. You know, it's like um, <clears throat> TV. Yeah, but that, that's just like, and I, I I've been like you know asked about certain stuff before, but like I remember years ago being a judge on. They called up and said. We want you to do be a judge on um, the after show after Big Brother, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, talk yeah. About? I said, no, nah, no, it's no, not no, me. No, no. It's just, like, no. it's just not worth it. No, uh, no. Who, who ended up doing it? Who? Uh, Joel Creasy. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, right. I think so. Okay. Have I got that wrong? He he, he did the I'm um, a celebrity. Oh, okay, after, okay, after, yeah, after, yeah. after, 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 like, after. I guess all that kind of stuff is good for exposure, but it's just not but exposure no, no, no. that I would, you know, be interested Look, in. Uh, it's like certain people it works for, but I just know I would not be good. It's not all exposure that. is good exposure. Mm. Some exposure is indecent. Yeah, <laughs> and that was an example of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've done things that I'm not particularly proud of. Look. In, in in the time I've known you, and it's been quite an, a long time, mm. y you've said no more than you've said yes. Mm. You've said m no to things. Yeah. And my friend Anthony uh, Murr, yes. who you know very well, is a very talented person. Yes. And, uh, he, he was one of, the, one of the best comics on the scene. Absolutely. Yes. But he said no more times than he said yes. He probably said no every time. Mm. I don't know if it was fear or or and or integrity mm -hmm. or both but you know do you know what anthony said to me what when i had a similar conversation with him yes he said the exact same thing that you said that he said no to so many things and he said take it from me joel fuck it do it all it doesn't matter yeah he yeah. says at the end of the day it doesn't matter he said no to a lot of I, uh, like um the glass house the glass house which yep. will anderson went on and mm -hmm. did some great things with and mm -hmm. made him a, a really nice career he mm -hmm. he was offered that first yeah he was offered a lot of things and i know because you know we hung out a lot and um so what i'm asking you mm -hmm. is because you seem to have that integrity thing mm -hmm. or fear i don't know what it is but there are things that are embarrassing too sure. i understand what kind of show would you love to do? If, if you could be the director, producer, writer of your own show. You mean like, uh, like w w what type of show? Or yeah. If, like, if, like a narrative-based comedy show, like, you know, a drama, drama, dramedy, like, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A dramedy. Yeah. Well, you know, like we mm. were doing like with members and guests. That's what oh, that yeah. was like, like, yeah, like yeah. The, the pilot that we wrote together. So like a sitcom, you'd like to be in a sitcom Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's good? Yeah, yeah, to write write a good, you know, Yeah, and what write, write a good... A good one, not, yeah. a, not a shit one. Yeah. There's a lot of shit out there. Yeah, That's the thing. And um, so if, if you had full control, yeah, what kind of show would you do? Um, well, the, you know, there's a concept, you know, like about the story of... Um, Jonathan and I, that would be an interesting yeah, one yeah. to write, you know, the, the Jonathan uh, the Magician. Yeah, about uh, a, this 18 year old kid that moves out to America and, and tour managing, you know, Jonathan, that would, make, great. That would make for a great, uh, great TV concept. But they're not going to do it because they why? go, why isn't this like Seinfeld? It's not like Seinfeld. Yeah, but then you could say the same thing. It's, Ricky Gervais would never have got the office then. No, but that's in England. Yeah. I'm talking about Australia. Australia. No, 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 but, but you'd make it in the States. Oh, he'd make it in the States. Yeah, then, oh, then yeah. that would go right. Then no, because, because a show like Seinfeld would never have got made in Australia. No, that's right. Not in the right. first place. Because people who run TV are idiots. Mm. You know, people who make the decisions, that's one thing they I've learned. So yeah. What have you learned in your life, Akmal? Yeah. One thing. People who make decisions on Australian television are fuckwits. Mm -hmm. And that's why nothing, there's no originality, there's nothing new, there's sure. nothing, it's all, and it's all stolen stuff, it's all like, oh yeah, let's do it like that, because that did well, Yeah. but where's, where's your sense of adventure, where's your sense of risk, Yes. I yeah. can't take risks, I'll lose my job, Yeah. No. Nah, got to pay we, the mortgage, we, we need a blueprint, need of a blueprint, it, something of that it, works, having been successful yeah, before, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did something like Seinfeld, but it was so bad. Who? In Australia? Yeah. What, what was it? It was a similar sort of thing, and this guy had a dog, I think. And really, When was um, this? Or did I dream that? I don't know. Maybe uh, I dreamt it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I do get confused occasionally, especially yeah. these days. Um, but so, something of a narrative, or, you know, of course, like writing a film would be great. That'd yes. Be, that'd be a, you know. That's a, the holy grail. Yeah. It's although, although, although these days, I don't know if film is the holy grail anymore, because there, um, you look at the quality of TV that's being written and yeah, directed yeah. and acted now. Just as good. Uh, just as good. And even more in more depth than a film. Because yeah. you get a show like, say, Breaking Bad. Yeah. That would never work as a film. And like and Brian Cranston, who played Walter White, the lead character, yeah, in it, yeah. he said that the uh, the character of Walter White, the, the character arc, mm-hmm. could never be communicated in a film. Too short. That, too short. Because mm. the, from where he comes from to where he ends up, that is a big jump. But and you couldn't will, do that in 90 minutes. No, you couldn't. But so, it will never be on the same uh, stature mm. as same like a film like, say, Citizen Kane or Apocalypse Now or The Godfather. Godfather, yeah. You know, that comes and goes because it's, 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 um, dis- it's more disposable mm. than one piece of art that mm. just has a beginning, middle and end within a Sure, film. sure. And that, is, and, and that is a big concept condensed into... The, yeah. The, that, that's, yeah. That is difficult to mm-hmm. condense something so like that into, but um, but you know something like this too. I enjoy this doing this podcast. Oh yeah, you know, like we don't get paid for this. No. We don't have any sponsors. Where we don't? Doing, no, I do. You do? Yeah, I've been paid. What have you been paid? No, I haven't been paid. <laughs> 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 like some I side paranoid going there. On. <laughs> uh, so, but like I, I just do this because we enjoy doing it. Yeah. But to do something like this, like in a in the in some kind of format. I, I don't know what other format we'd do this in. It's, yeah. This is kind of what we do kind of lends itself There's to not much, being uh, a podcast. Because someone uh, said the other day, um, oh, it's great, you know, you and Akmal doing this podcast, you guys could do a radio, you could get on radio. And I, I thought, well, I kind of prefer doing the podcast. Like, well, well, radio would pay a lot more. Yes, it <laughs> would pay a lot more. Pay, well, uh, you know, more than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, think <laughs> so. that, I think we can achieve that. <laughs> we can get yes. Two bucks, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay well, a lot more. Just wow. 200%. Just 200% percent. Yeah, more than you were earning yeah, yeah. with Akmal. Yeah. It's actually costing me because I have to drive yeah, from Canberra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, 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 you, but you have to do things for the sake of doing it as well. Yes. As long as, um, you know. Yeah. So there's a part of yeah. So when you getting back to your question, yeah, am I doing it because of uh, because of integrity or fear? Um, I don't, pro- a bit of both, I think. Yeah. A bit of both. It's not what I asked, but that's that's, no, a that's good what answer. You, that's what you asked before. No, no I said, you? what kind of show would you? No, no. But before you said that, oh, your, que- I said your question that, yeah. was, why oh, don't yeah. you do that? Is it because of integrity or fear? Oh yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. getting back to that part of it. I'll take that back. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. thought yeah. I answered the. Didn't I not answer the other question? Oh, you did. Sort of show you I did. did. Yeah, yeah. Or something like Clive James. I love Clive James's stuff. Like when I was younger, watching yeah, his, yeah. like his postcard series, yeah. like postcards from Bombay, postcards so travel from Paris. But just like the way that he would travel, and you know, like Anthony Bourdain used to do. But my, I really, Clive James, when I was a kid watching his stuff, I, I yeah, loved yeah. watching that. And, so and, and imagine he, travel shows now with coronavirus. No. Nah. Well, uh, <laughs> let's go across the road. <laughs> Look at the neighbors. Let's travel uh, to Woolworth. What language do you speak? We speak mm. English, dickhead. Oh, yeah. thank you. Okay. Nice okay. talking to thank you. you. Yeah. And that's the show for this week. Yeah. Next week, we go to um, Har- Harris Avenue, just around the corner. Yeah. Uh, we're keeping our distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but something like that would be... Or, or just yeah, Clive James's show that he used to have, the interview show, yeah. and like anything that Clive James used to do, I, I, I think would be... He uh, was brilliant. He was, yeah. yeah. He's, um, he's a very funny man. When, when he, he said he, he was given... Um, he died now. Yeah. He died of cancer. And leukemia. Leukemia. Yeah. And, uh, um, and they said to him, what's the worst thing about not having... Uh, you know, having limited time? Mm. He said... Uh, I won't see the end of, um, what's the show? With, I shouldn't have started this story. What what's show? the show that's, like, that's Shakespearean when it was like really big? Oh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 I want to see how, uh, if I can just live to see the end of Game of Thrones, I'll, I'll die a happy yeah. man. Well, he would have died a happy man because yeah. he did. Oh, God. He died I, last year. And I wonder if he, if he was disappointed after the end of well, Game of Thrones. I, you go, oh. I'd rather live, actually. Yeah, I'm done without <laughs> knowing that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a shit ending. Well, I um, it's funny you mention that because just this week been reading his um, one of his last books, yeah. um, which is called Play All, and it's about through his illness he watched the box sets of all these iconic 
TV shows and then comments about them and just gives like you know, amazing mm. insights into you know his his they're not really reviews more critiques on these mm, um, mm. different shows but he 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 spoke of these revering the the writing in these shows like mm. Sopranos and Deadwood and and mm. Breaking Bad and and saying that they are um, they are like the modern day pros. You know really? that the, 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 the well written mm. and that and that communicating the human condition mm. so he well. Wa- he was on a hell of a lot of morphine <laughs> at the time, <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe so maybe the TV wasn't even on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's uh, no, it's uh, it's it's really young. Um, yeah, amazing. So, so yeah, well, I, I'm I'm glad that we have had people like that to mm. to you know to entertain and inspire us. Yeah, over and the you years. know, the, the thing is about acting generally, are we talking about Ricky Gervais taking the piss out of the Golden Globes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and I admire him for that because people who, who do, you know, people like, you know, they, they just think too much of themselves. Mm-hmm. There's too much sense of their own importance. Mm-hmm. And you go, wait, I know you're just acting, you're just playing yeah. around, you know? Yeah. The good ones, like Marlon Brando said, that's just nonsense. Yeah. Just well, Brando wouldn't even turn up for his, yeah, yeah, his, award ceremonies. Yeah. Or he saw for, for what it is. But when people take themselves too seriously, you mm. go, maybe you're just bullshitting, right? Yeah. Um, when we were on radio, uh, we upset Russell Crowe. Mm. Imagine how hard it is to upset Russell Crowe. <laughs> 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 what would it take for Russell Crowe to lose his temper? Yeah, we were we, we were on radio and. Uh, was I t- uh, did we do this already? No, no, you haven't no, no. told me about this. Yeah, yeah, no, and um, and uh, my this mate. This is when you're on Nova, right? When I was on Nova, yeah. right? It was like a drive show, it was nationwide, yeah. and um, and and uh, I got a mate of mine who's a genius, Lee Perry. Mm-hmm. He's a- yeah, with voices, spot on, absolute genius. His Alan Jones was impeccable. He remember? did, yeah, he did Alan Jones yeah. for me. He's a yeah. <laughs> walk bashing kit. Yeah, for the Cronulla Riot. The so Cronulla Riot. was the show in um. Uh, in 2007. Wow, yeah. yeah. The festival. But he's, he's brilliant because he doesn't sound like an impressionist. Yeah. He sounds yeah. like the actual person. He, yeah. he Those gets dirty grubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The wog bashing kit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> wow. I don't remember it, but it was, I remember it being yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh, was it because it, it was a skit about the Cronulla riot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. travel with, uh, come with me yeah. to areas where you can bash wogs <laughs> and, uh, you know... <laughs> But he, did, you know, he got his voice so perfectly that even uh, after people saw that, I'm just so I'm just saying you probably we're probably going to get a call after this from Nick Giannopoulos saying you're not allowed to use, use the, the word, word wog. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, I go hope on. So. <laughs> I hope so. We'll use it. <laughs> yeah, silly wog. No, you can't. Every time you call him a wog, <laughs> 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 you have to pay him. <laughs> I, I, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So people would come up after the show and go, "How did you get Alan Jones to do that?" I go, yeah, no, yeah. It's not Alan Jones. Yeah. It's a guy called Lee Perry. They go, wow, mm. because it doesn't sound like an impression. Right. Anyway, I, I rang up Lee and said, do you want to pretend that you're Russell Crowe mm. and we're in your house? So I did this thing and just for fun, you know, mm-hmm. just again, oh, we're going to, to Russell. This is when he was, uh, when he threw the phone at someone. Oh, yeah, that's right, New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, uh, he was in the ho- a hotel at New York and he didn't like Couldn't call, make a phone call. Or something, and he so threw, he smashed threw the it the phone. the clerk. Yeah, hit him in the head. In the head. And yeah. the guy was bleeding. And, um, and then he just yeah. paid him off. So he, there you go, mate. You <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, uh, anyway, so, so we was, everyone was taking the piss. And we right. pretend that we're in his house. Mm. And then he comes out and tells me off. Mm-hmm. It's Lee Perry doing it, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, no, mate. If I, if I see you, I'm going to punch your head in. Mm-hmm. Gonna come, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm not a yeah. great inventor. Yeah, yeah, mate. Russell yeah. Crowe. Russell Crowe, yeah. mate. Yeah, I'm going to fucking smash you. you know? Anyway, <coughs> he, he said, uh, so, <coughs> and people believed it. People yeah. were ringing me up going. So they're hearing this on the radio call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people were ringing up the station going, oh, man, if he touches you, like fans of mine who are like, you know, <laughs> lebs who go, man, we're going we're gonna to team together and bash the shit out of him. <laughs> you know, and the secretary had said, look, it's just a joke. It's not really Lee Perry. That's how convincing yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. But, then, but then we get a call from his management. Russell's. Yeah. Saying, we've just heard this. It's not funny. And uh, don't do that again or we'll sue you. Really? General manager comes down and says, can you not do Russell Crowe anymore? Right. He just, he didn't find it. come from f- the top. He did yeah. not find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not amused. Nah, nah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's, it's just people, I, I don't know, I, I, I resent that uh, sense of whatever profession you're in, yeah. you think you're better than anyone yeah. else. Well, Russell is a very good actor. Yeah. Great actor. So but the sense of humor seems to be lacking there. A lot of actors who, yeah, I think the good actors can do comedy. Yeah. 
you know, Meryl Streep can do comedy. Mm -hmm. Robert mm -hmm. De Niro can do comedy. Mm -hmm. Nicole Kidman mm. can't do comedy. No. Russell Crowe? Now, the, uh -oh. the, I know what movie you're going to refer to here. No, I wasn't going to refer to any No, movie. there was a movie called um, Cinderella. A Very Good Year. A Very Good Year. I think it was. And it was, yeah. um, there was some he tried to do some comedic stuff in that. No, yeah. Marion Cotillard was the, no, no. the female lead in it. No. And it, it just wasn't, no. it, it didn't really work. No, However, no. you should never attend I think, I think Ridley Scott directed it, I think. Yeah. Um, if memory serves me correct. He inherits a farm, an old property in, yeah. in Italy. Get some but, acting lessons. But there was, no, a, no, no, no. <laughs> there was a film that he was in, yeah. and comedically is very good. Which? With, um, with, uh, it was a Shane Black film called um, Nice Guys. And they're, and oh, he's, yeah. he's like a standover guy. But he would have and, been a straight man. Um, yeah, I mean, it, but, been, but, it could have been a funny film. Yeah, but he, he, he but he, there was some, there were like some. Yeah, uh, Ryan, yeah. um, Ryan R Reynolds was the, um, was the actor in it. Yes, uh, of, yes. he was hilarious in it. Yeah. some great classic kind of like Laurel and Hardy type comedy. Yeah, yeah. Look, and, if and, it's and, good dialogue, he could probably carry it off. But, yeah. but and the directing of it, um, by and large, yeah. by and large, I think great actors have the complete repertoire mm -hmm. you know and, and you can tell the people mm -hmm. who take themselves too seriously mm -hmm. Brando uh, he was very good at comedy yeah Brando yeah. Robert De Niro mm -hmm. um, Meryl Streep I think is very underrated as, yeah, as a comedian comedi yeah, yeah she's got great comic timing yeah and then uh, and then you get Tom Cruise who yeah. has not got nah. an ounce of humour in him he, whatsoever uh, I will no say, matter how I, what I, I will say this though oh here we go it <laughs> was very funny though playing the Harvey Weinstein no, type I, in Tropic Thunder no but I didn't find that no, funny no. I found it way over the top yeah but, well, but everything was over the top in that film it was a big film yeah but you know? in terms of funny I probably thought it was the least yeah. entertaining part of the yeah. film you know the wig didn't look real no no uh, his performance but, but was, I thought it, it was as, more as a big it, it wasn't was, funny no but it was a big uh, it was a big um, it, was it was more a aggressive heightened, it was a heightened performance but all his performances are he gets that high pitch yeah. <laughs> 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 he's, he's like this you know I mean it was the least uh, <laughs> so that's good yeah that's yeah good. that's a good he <laughs> always gotta get that yeah, high pitch yeah. voice yeah you know, when he gets angry or whatever. Yeah. But that scene wasn't, it was a comedic uh, uh, role, mm. but he didn't, you may imagine someone who, with real skill mm. in comedy, mm. you know, doing that role, it would have done, it would have been a lot funnier. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, um, but it's just, it's a, you know, we'd like to believe that we have a special skill. A special comedic skill. <laughs> which yeah. will not be able to demonstrate anytime well, you see, soon. Well, you see some com comedy actors make very good straight actors too, like Robin Williams. Yeah, but like he yeah, he yeah. him him as I actually preferred his work playing straight roles than like he was great with comedy, but you see like his role in Fisher King. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah he's playing like a. Uh, I mean, that was a comedic. But 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 but, 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 but still, yeah. it was it had a real comedic with real heart. Soul, yeah, comedic with heart. And, and and his work in um his work in Dead Poet Society. But that and, was and th there was some really good comedy moment. there as well. Uh, um, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, it's phenomenal work in Goodwill. Yeah. Like that that was some of his best work. Yeah, like, but I think if you can do comedy, then you can act. Yeah, generally. Jerry, Jerry Lewis in The King of Comedy. The best role. Yeah. I was never a big fan of Jerry Lewis. Yeah. But, I know, I know you King are. Of, but in King of Comedy. Because he played a straight man. Yeah, he was very He, good. he was very real. And you did really. good, Wang. You did good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, comedy is it's subjective. Like, yeah. everyone loves him. I've never laughed at him. Even, uh, Jerry? Yeah, even uh, when I was a kid. I, I guess, well, when I was a kid, I grew up watching his so stuff at I. my grandparents' place. On, no, uh, I grew up on his school holidays. Would be like, I thought it was be, hilarious when I was a kid. Nah, I thought no. it was a bit over the top. Yeah. Nah, a bit, bit contrived. Really? Yeah. Uh, the stuff that he did with Dean Martin, I, I yeah, thought it was great. I, look, people worship him, but I never yeah. found him funny. I found mm. him a bit, that character's a bit, comedy is for me, well, it works best when it just seems to flow. It's yeah, natural. Yeah. It's not. It's not overworked. Yeah. It's not. It's not thought about too much. You know who I loved? Who my favorite was when I was a kid, though, comedic who? actor, who? Bill Murray. Oh yeah, Bill Murray, great. Yeah. But but how how effortless does that oh, look? Totally, totally. Compared to Jerry Lewis. Yeah, who, yeah. Well, it's a totally different style. Of, of course, comedy, I acknowledge but, that. But Bill was just like I, 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 something within me as a kid really connected yeah, to what me he too. what he was doing yeah and it's uh, and, and it's weird he's always remained relevant throughout my life Bill yeah, Murray yeah. in terms of from when I was a kid watching like Blues Brothers Stripes 
through to Ghostbusters, yeah. and then later on, you know, like What About Bob, and then... What About uh, Bob's a great film. Hilarious. It's, but, you know, it's very underrated, but people don't know about it. Yeah. It's I, really I funny. I remember I went to the Village Street Cinema on George Street to see that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was great. And, yeah, yeah. But, but then, like, later on, when he started moving into other stuff, like Lost in Translation and, like, the Jim Jamoosh films, Broken Flowers, and, yeah, and yeah. then the Wes Anderson film. So he's always evolved. You stuck with him. Yeah, yeah. He, you but, stuck with him. Yeah. When, when other weaker individuals abandoned yeah. Bill... <laughs> Bill motherfucking Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Was that in the coffee and cigarette? Yeah, yeah. Bill yeah. motherfucking Murray, man. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Bill Murray. Bill motherfucking yeah. Murray. Yeah. That was RZA <laughs> from um, Wu Tang. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, you know your films. That's yeah. for sure. That's for sure. But uh, that's that's. But, what but, but that was um. So but in saying that though, I just want to ask real quick, Jim Carrey. See, I, I've never found Jim Carrey funny. Really? Yeah, really? I know he can... Look, you know... Even in Cable Guy, no, the no, darker no. kind of comedy? Yeah, I, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it because he is a competent actor mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a very good actor. But that over-the-top stuff, I find uh, less convincing. Right. Because the what about looks, Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, Dumb and Dumber is very funny because it's see, consistent. See, for, that me, for me, though, I think, and I agree, it's very difficult to do that kind of heightened comedy. Make it work. Make yeah. it work. But I think someone like a Jerry Lewis or someone like a, a Jim but not Carrey for me. made it. I think they, they're the rare few that made that heightened comedy work. Yeah, but for, for see, me, for me. Yeah, but to me, someone like a Peter Sellers or. Um, yeah, but, but that's totally different. But he, if he was. No, 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 but I'm just saying that that. Is a style that appeals to me. Right, yeah. That's what yeah, I but find. But yeah, Peter Sellers, um, like, no, no doubt, yeah, he yeah. is one of the greats. Yeah, but he, he looks effortless. Yes. If you watch Clouseau, if you watch uh, Inspector Clouseau done by, um, you know, one of my heroes, uh, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. I yeah, mean, I he's a brilliant I comedian. I didn't see those remakes. He's a brilliant yeah. comedian. Yeah. There's no denying that. Yeah. But he couldn't carry it off mm. because you always had Peter Sellers to compare it to. Yes. And Peter Sellers yeah. never, and this is the thing, he never looked like he was trying to be funny. He never pushed. He never looked like he was trying to be funny. Yeah. Where if you see the Steve Martin version, he goes, oh, this is going to be a bit, a funny yeah. bit. And it just didn't. But then you see Steve Martin in his own, like, oh, no, he's glory, great. like trains, planes and automobiles. Yeah, brilliant. Like him and John Candy together. But he, that like wasn't that. heightened um, no. comedy. No. Uh, it was just, uh, he was almost a straight guy. But that's, there. but that's almost like just getting a, someone to, like, yeah. When Clouseau's done like that, just leave it be. Leave it be. Leave it be. Don't mess it up. Yeah. And, and, no, and, and the reason it worked so well was because he never thought, I'm being funny here. No, I'm no. just going to let the situation, mm -hmm. uh, I play it for real, mm -hmm. and let the situation mm -hmm. um, bring on the, the, the laughs. Yeah. Very antagoni antagonistic relationship between him and Blake Edwards, the director of that, oh, yeah. uh, of those films. But he... but. Uh, but you can see, though, with with, Genius. with his delivery, I mean, yeah. he, he was right. In the hands of yeah. anyone else. Yeah. There's a guy called Alan Arkin. Oh, he's who, great. I think he's a comic... Yes, genius. I've been yeah. reading a book of his. Um, really? Yeah, he he's it's like a like a mini kind of memoir. Yeah, but he, he 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 is comedy. Like you yes. know, he, when he does it, it looks effortless. Mm -hmm. Watch Catch Twenty Two. Yeah, which is a serious film, but he brings comedy into it. He's just so natural. <laughs> yeah, he's another one of those natural. Doesn't yeah, look like he's yeah. being funny. It's just, yeah. it's just a gift. Yeah, and then you get Russell Crowe. He just wants to smash people's heads in. <laughs> so Russell, we got this film where you smash people's heads in for two hours. Oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah, no, no fucking worries. No worries, mate. But what'd you say? Huh? Fuck looking at. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> it's not that convincing. Hang, hang on. <laughs> yeah, it's come to me. What? What's come to you? The four C's. Oh, I thought Jesus. No, no. The, yeah. We were talking about the four C's of diamonds before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, what the? F I couldn't get the. I couldn't get the fourth C. Oh, we go. Cut. The C words. Cut. Yeah. Clarity. Color. Color. Carrot. 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 Oh, that's what you forgot. Been carrot. dangling the carrot the whole time. Didn't even see it. Oh, man. I got a fifth C for you. <laughs> but I'll <laughs> off, <laughs> offline. We, we can talk about that after. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, there we go. I, th I think that's a point to wrap up on. It's a we, perfect we, 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 place. We've had a breakthrough. Yes. But well, this has been an interesting discussion. I you think know? so. Uh, well, uh, interesting uh, to us. Yeah. Well, it has mm. been. Hopefully interesting to the people listening hopefully, and watching. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we will continue of talking of, about things of interest to us. Yes. Until mm -hmm. next week. Until next week. Stay well. Stay safe. Be kind to each other. And, and we'll see you then. And don't eat. Don't drink gasoline. Same Akmal time. Same Joel channel. Yes. <laughs>